Hello there, and welcome to Wednesday night meditation at Unity Spiritual Living Center in Abilene, Texas. I'm Diana Liz, your session facilitator, and I am looking forward to sharing uh, Kirtan Kriya because it's a meditation that is very, very special to me and one that I'm very dedicated to, and I can't wait to share. Um, so I will begin. Let so uh, Kirtan Kriya. Uh, introduction this evening to this 12-minute meditation practice and its neurobiology. All meditations have their own neuro, neuro, neural signature, and this one is particularly interesting. Kirtan Kriya, the word Kirtan means song, and the word Kriya means movement. And I believe that the fact that we're singing it's kind of like a lullaby to ourselves, to soothe us, just the way that we soothe the baby. Sa, ta, na, ma are the sounds that we sing. And they're believed to come from the, word, the words sat nam, which means my true essence. <clears throat> the sounds also stimulate 84, that's right, 84 acupressure points in the upper palate of the mouth and the lips. <clears throat> and we, we do know that uh, uh, relaxing our face is critical for uh, impacting our vagal nerve. So as we sing these songs, we soothe our nervous system and we help the body come to the relaxation response. What is really interesting about this meditation is that it increases and decreases neurotransmitters. And it's like it has the magic formula. It increases dopamine and, serot and serotonin and melatonin. And that makes, if you do it in the evening, it helps you sleep. Uh, it increases uh, glutamate and acetylcholine and GABA, which is very relaxing to the brain. And uh, it decreases cortisol, which is the stress. And it, uh, it decreases adrenaline as well. So somehow the ancients developed this magic formula to increase the neurotransmitters that we need and decrease the ones that we don't need. To understand the 84 acupressure points, uh, and the mudras, the finger positions, we need to understand uh, homunculus. I think I said that right, homunculus. And the homunculus is a representation of the real estate that different sensory parts have in our brain. So our hands, and if you were a, a pianist, for example, your hands would be even larger because the more that we use a certain part of our body, the real estate that it has in the brain increases. And this is one of the things that is believed to help uh, in Alzheimer's. People who have a lot of education have what they call an energetic reserve. The, you can see that on the humong homunculus, uh, the lips are enormous and the tongue is enormous because so much of our sensory from our mouth is in our brain. And you know that babies use that when they're little to, to explore the world. And that's because of all of this sensory uh, points in, the, in this area of the body. Uh, I had a question earlier, can I do this meditation uh, when I'm walking or any, yes, you can, you can chant Shatanama anywhere, anytime. You can do it out loud. You can whisper it. You can do it silently. But there's something uh, that uh, is very important about the pineal gland. And I have been following the work of Joe Dispenza since the 1990s. And he has uh, written, uh, he was a chiropractor who became a neurobiologist and he has just, uh, from his first book to today, 
he has moved in the direction of, of the pineal glion and he's, he's doing some extremely interesting work. And I wish I could take his workshop because it would be amazing. But um, there is something about folk, this, well, this meditation is supposed to be done with the eyes closed. And there's something about focusing on the pineal gland. Uh, I, I have not been doing this part of the meditation. And when I started reading about it and, and thinking about it, uh, this, is, this is about impacting the third ventricle in the brain. And you have the hypothalamus and the thalamus and, and um, the pituitary gland, all of them in this small little space right in the middle where the light comes down and then it goes forward. And so visualizing the light coming down to that center point and then like sweeping out. So the light comes down and then I visualize like a breath of air carrying the light out my forehead. And when I started doing this, I noticed that there was a significant change in the relaxation response. Now, I didn't come to this meditation um, easily. I um, went, I, I enrolled in the uh, Daniel Amen Brain Health Coaching Academy. And I, it was 50 hours of lectures. And on the third lecture, I picked up the phone and I called the clinic in Atlanta, Georgia, and I made an appointment. And I flew to Atlanta, Georgia. I was there for three days. It was two days of testing and one day of meeting uh, with Dr. Benson, my psychiatrist. And something happens when you look at your brain. And my brain scan looked like the one right here on the left. You can see the perfusions. Those are the little dimples in the brain. And that is the ADD that Dr. Patterson found in my brain when I did a QEEG here in Abilene at Restore Wellness Center. Uh, you can also, now I don't have this, um, my cerebellum was more like the one on the right because I dance. And when you do movement, uh, if you do juggling or if you do table tennis, uh, if you do especially dancing, dancing is really, really good for this part of the brain. And this is, this part of the brain organizes the brain. And so it's really important that this part of the brain uh, have all the energy that it needs. Now, what makes these perfusions go away is energy and dopamine and blood flow. So there are this meditation impacts the ADD that was causing my brain issues. And matter of fact, Dr. Benson prescribed this meditation for me. Now, this, this scan is also very interesting. And my scan is not quite as dramatic as this one, but it um, is this, this right here. I don't know if you can see my, my pointer, the the little flat line there, it's a triangle. The top point is the anterior cingulate gyrus, and then you have the basal ganglia, and then you have the nucleus accumbens, and then the thalamus on the bottom. When you see this triangle in a spec brain scan, it usually indicates that there might be PTSD. You do not there's no certainty uh, about, how, it just indicates, and then you have to do the examination and ask the questions and, and confirm. And so I have PTSD and there's a certain level of sadness that goes with this limbic, uh, with the thalamus down this little, little line that goes across. In this particular brain scan, the thalamus, you can see, is not all white like it is on the right. And uh, I'm sorry, that's the uh, cerebellum. And that's not good. You want the cerebellum to have a lot of energy because it regulates all your movements 
and it, and it regulates your, your sensory. So when this starts to go down, you get overstimulation and lights become brighter. And that, that is the scariest thing that can happen. Uh, I was uh, in an intersection uh, one day in Dallas when I recognized that I had a serious problem. And I was there and I didn't know whether to turn left or to turn right or to go straight. And for me, not knowing is triggers my PTSD. Uh, it's any time that I don't have a strategy, just bam, my PTSD can hit in a second. And in, in that second, in the intersection, all of a sudden the cars just were moving. It just like the warp speed, all of a sudden you just boom, the cars are going faster and the lights were so much brighter and the sounds were just, you know, just irritating. And that's overstimulation that can happen when the cerebellum isn't working quite right. So uh, we talked about all the, uh, how this meditation increases all the neurotransmitters that we need and decreases the ones that we don't need. So it's absolutely incredible. And uh, I hope that, uh, I know that my brain has improved. Uh, oh, one more thing. I uh, work as a neurotech at Restore Wellness. And uh, I get to uh, witness what happens with brain waves with people as I'm working with clients. And when we do an assessment at the beginning, in the middle, and at the end, something as subtle as squeezing the jaw can cause an artifact and you have these horrible jagged lines that go across instead of little bleeps. You just have these jags. And if you cross your legs, if you hold your neck and you have tension in the neck, you, it affects the brain waves. So if we want to have a healthy brain, we need to be able to find those moments of moving our brain from fight, flight, and freeze to rest, rest, relax, and restore. So the hand represents a brain map. On the thumb side of the hand, we have the parasympathetic system and we have rest, relax, restore, love, happiness, joy. All of those things are possible for us. When we are in uh, anxiety, depression, anger, or addiction, the possibility of being on the other side is impossible. The brain needs time to restore itself, especially at night. So getting a good night's sleep is critical for brain health. And being able to move the, the, the brain from the anxiety, the stress, the, 